Community. This is the second in a series of videos about using Discover Life uh, identification guides. Um, we talked about in the first guide, or in the first video, how to use the guides, uh, some very basic features. Um, so we won't repeat much of that. And in this video, what we want to do is talk about some advanced features. One thing I want to point out here in the main page for Discover Life is that the search bar has type ahead features that allow you to um, uh, to work on your spelling of the species. So if you start typing, for example, Hylaeus, um, the genus comes up. And then if you start adding a space or any of the letters, you can see that the various um, species come up. And you can um, go back and um, click on, on any of those. By clicking the search bar, you go to the species page which for this species, there's not much of anything since it's in Australia, and we're not focusing on that region. Anyway, very useful uh, feature. I also want to point out again that this, by clicking on the original button down here, I'm going to increase the um, size here of the screen. If you click on the original, you'll go to a, um, a different server than the Discover Life server. And when Discover Life is slow, by um, going to this server, it almost always speeds the identification guides up very quickly if, for whatever reason, the guides are getting a lot of use. And this site does get a lot of use. So let's go to the guides and talk about some of the features there that we um, uh, didn't cover in the last video. So let's go uh, make a Kylie female here guide. So here's the basic guide. On the left, list of species. On the right are questions. We talked about how to use this in the past. We're going to talk about some additional things here. One, just to point out that the help um, features in Discover Life are very detailed. People usually don't look at them, but they're there. And it gives you a lot of very nitty gritty things for things like importing your data into the mapping files and um, some of the features that even I won't talk about today that are more for <coughs> developers. Um, if you click on credits for any particular guide, depending on how uh, the person who did the guide set it up, there's often information about what uh, publications were used in creating that guide. And that can be useful if you want to go to the original sources. Um, if you click Restart, um, at any point that refreshes the guide, and a new blank guide for, in this case, Mega Kylie Female shows up, starting you over again. If you click on Checklist, it brings up the same list of species that are involved in the, um, in, that are, are used in the guide, but it also has the author and date, which again can sometimes be useful, and also has the links back to the individual species pages right here. Um, now if we go back to the guide here, hit Restart. I don't think I clicked on it. There we go. Um, another useful feature for people who have low bandwidth um, are on dial-up. Um, the guides still work very well, but the pictures can slow things down because there's a lot of load time associated with bringing those images in. By clicking Images Off, you can um, uh, speed up your load time. OK, so the real powerful features that we haven't talked about yet are in the menu section. So if you click on Menu, what you see is you now have the original um, questions for the guide on the right. But on the left are the guide building tools. And that has many features in addition to the tools needed to actually create a guide um, and update a guide that are here that are useful to people who have been using guides for a while. So many times you know that you have a specimen, and you, you already can narrow it down to one or two things. You just need to go back to the guidance for how to separate those two species. So rather than going through the entire guide, by using this button, this is the most used button here under the menu, is the Has button. The Has button brings up all the questions that are in the guide in alphabetical order. Um, in large guides, this can go on and on and on. So often, it's easier to just use the Find. So if we click Find and say Albatarsis, you can see it's picking up 
albatarsis there, and by parsing through, you find all the locations where albatarsis is mentioned. You can then click on the jump and go right down to um, the character, in this case, albatarsis, albatarsis versus mendica, that you may want to um, go to to remember how to separate out those two. Uh, once you do that, you're done. You don't even are using the guide. You're just using the guide's um, characters to help you because you already know that it's either albatarsis or mendica. So that's very useful. Um, I'll point out some things here that um, uh, are a little more subtle. So for example here, if you're interested in, well, what species have, um, in this case in the Mechakali females, have mandibles where, where they have uh, cutting edges between the teeth or don't have cutting edges between the teeth. If you use this feature in the guide and you press um, one of these questions, what you're going to get is you're going to get all the species that are scored for having, in this case, cutting edges between the teeth, but you will also get all the species that were not scored for this character at all. So in other words, not scored for this or this. And you can't tell whether it was scored or not. So here you can use these buttons only has and not. So if you click has and this, and we look over here and, and um, we see that in this particular case, all the species that are in the guide have been scored for either having this, one, this character or not. But in places where that's not the case, this then gives you a list for all the species that have been scored for that character. And therefore, you can go back and look in your collection for species that have that character and perhaps learn what that looks like if that's a question. Or in the opposite case, you could look at which species have this character absent. And then you can be certain that that is the case. The only button is useful when you have, so I'm going to click that off, um, a more complicated section like this. So has works just as we saw before. So the list over here only has Megacali Lenata that has this state of this character. But if we look at only and we um, press the same one, um, uh, Lenata stays because it is only scored for that and only that character. And um, if you look at some of these others, these are the um, species that are scored for only this character and none of the other characters. So sometimes that's useful when you're looking at what is um, how broadly a specimen is scored for a set of characters. Um, so uh, back to um, what we were looking at over here. So let's click that off, click this on so we get a bunch of the species back into our list. Some of these things are guide building tools which you really don't need to look at. But some useful things are, for example, here if you click on the radio button for characters and you click on a radio box in front of the uh, species name and you hit submit, what you do is you get a listing on the left of the character and then for this species, it shows you what it's scored for in terms of the states. So sometimes if you have a question about a species, you can simply go through and see if all these um, the states that are scored for the species um, show up in your specimen. So you just basically walk through these and check off yes, 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 or perhaps no, which may question your identification. So this is a good check of your ID because you can now go through every single question that this species is scored for and cross-reference cross it against your uh, specimen to see if that um, is present. The last of the tools that I'm going to show you that are useful to the user rather than the guide developer is this Differences button. So if you click Differences and you can click more than one species here, but this is a comparison tool. So we're now going to compare the scorings of Megachile addenda to Megachile albatarsis. And by hitting submit, it's going to bring up these uh, two species. And it's only going to show the states of characters and the characters that differ between the two. So again, this is useful when you get down to um, two or sometimes three species and you're trying to figure out which do I have. 
here is a quick way to go through the guide, at least at least the scorings of the guides, and look at what the characters are that each of the species have that differ. And then that may give you some weight of evidence to um, uh, choose one over the other. So again, a last but useful feature. OK, one thing, the last thing I'm going to show you here is that when you go to the species pages, you do have the mapping information here. Here we're in Meg Kylie Addenda. And you have pictures that people have uploaded. And again, we encourage people to submit pictures to us, and we'll add them with your authorship on it. And there's literature, if we have it. Again, we ask people to send literature, um, and we will add that in here too. Um, we just clip out the species description parts. Um, there are links here to the Species Guides and World Guide Checklist. We're going to talk about that in our next video, so I won't go into details now. But something useful here to point out is that if the bee species have host information, uh, plant host information uh, associated with them, that's summarized here. And this is, can be very useful for people who are trying to look at um, relationships with uh, plants and to learn your plants too. Um, and this is thanks to uh, John Pickering and John Asher for putting this together. So for example, um, by clicking on, so here it says Apuntia uh, humifusa, and you can see this is the database, um, and you can click on, it has one record, and you can click on those records, and it brings up the record itself, and you can see that it was um, determined by George Eichwart, and it was on, indeed on Apuntia, and whatever information that the, um, the university's collection database people want to have show shows up here. So it gives you a little more possible information. Additionally, you can click on the plant name because Discover Life includes information about all species that people have provided information on. And a lot of times, there's a lot of plant information. You can see distribution. Interesting that it's showing up here in uh, different parts of the world, and um, has links to floras, pictures, and the same kind of thing you saw for bees um, often shows up for plants. And as usual, we're interested in um, any plant pictures that you can provide, particularly for uh, plants that um, we don't have uh, pictures of, in addition to the other kinds of bits of information. OK, that's it for this guide. I hope that you found it interesting. You can always email me if you have questions. And um, I hope you have fun using these guides. And if you see anything wrong or uh, something can be improved, please email me, and we will try and add that. Thank you.